Hello, everybody. This is Elaine McFadden, and I'm here at the Hilton San Diego, hanging out with Dr. Stephanie Senev here, who's here uh, for the Environmental Health Symposium, uh, which is a huge event. We're getting people from all over that are actually interested in getting rid of pesticides and glyphosate out of our food. All these toxins do not belong in our food, do not belong in our, our environment. And people are really starting to ask the questions, why are we doing this? <laughs> why, are, why are we poisoning ourselves, everybody? Why is it in our food? Why is it in our air? Why is it in our water? Why is it in our soil? And that's pretty much, uh, we're dumping billions of pounds every single year of some of the most toxic substances on the planet. And Dr. Senev here, who's a researcher over at MIT, over there in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, has really taken a close look at this because she's very interested in this because she's a lot like me and that we both genuinely care about people. Right. We care about their health, we care about our babies, care about our children's children and the kind of world we're living, leaving them and how safe our food is and preventing disease and suffering and all these extra costs that are making our country weak and our people weak instead of making us strong. And so, you know, what do, what do you think about when you get up in the morning, Stephanie? I mean, what is, <laughs> what, what, is like, what is like your goal for the day? I'm going to get Monsanto today. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it's really, uh, it's really I kind difficult. of feel like that every day. I know. It's such a battle that we're in. And, you know, we're the good guys, so we're going to win. But we have got a, a much, you know, underfunded team. I mean, we, it's so much money on the other side, and it's so difficult. And they, they know they have so many skills for uh, giving misinformation and then for suppressing the fact, the truth, and which is very, very disturbing to me. So I, I yeah, every day I think about my grandchildren and what is their future going to be, and it looks it looks really grim, you know. And I just feel so uh, disturbed by the concept of having. I'm imagining, you know, of women, 16 years from now, which is the projection. If you just look at the curve mm -hmm. of autism, you know, the, it's going up exponentially. And if you just continue the curve. Mathematically, 16 years from now, if I'm a young woman considering starting a family, I face a very scary statistic, which is an 80% chance for autism if it's a boy. If I have a boy, 80% chance that child 80% chance? 50% chance, and that's going to be 80% for the oh boys because they have four times as much risk as the girls. And, you know, would I consider having a son or consider getting pregnant under those circumstances? I don't think so, you know? It's just too much risk. And, what is going to happen to these people when, once we have this kind of, already we have over 50% of the kids with something, you know, they've got food allergies, they've got asthma, they've got eczema, they've got ADHD, you know, you're getting depression and, and anorexia and the teen girls. I mean, it's just amazing how well, sick our children are. Antidepressants in children, I mean, I know, th this is like unheard of. It's just crazy, all the drugs that they're being fed, all the Ritalin, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's just amazing to me that this is happening and that it, and that we just kind of go about our lives as if that's normal. That's what really puzzles me. Well, I know my son would have, they would have been, loved to have like put him on something and now he's, you know, graduated from Berkeley with a double major on the honor roll, Congratulations you know. Congratulations to him. And, you know, he didn't finish high school because he couldn't concentrate and he learned differently, mm -hmm. but they don't have any kind of a program. Other than just get to take just, out the Yeah, drugs. just do your homework, you know, the one kind of program, but yeah. if a child learns it in a, a different way, they have absolutely nothing for them. Yeah, well, I think the children are, are sick in so many different ways, and that's got to be very disruptive of the schools. You think about all the peanut allergies and the gluten intolerance. They can't even just celebrate a birthday with cupcakes anymore because, you know, all the allergies. And I think those allergies are directly connected to glyphosate in big ways. It looks, take the gluten intolerance, and I've written a paper with Anthony Samsel on the topic of uh, glyphosate and gluten intolerance because the wheat is sprayed with glyphosate right before the harvest. This is something people don't realize. Gly uh, wheat is not a GMO food, and so people think it's safe. Mm -hmm. But the bread is bound to have glyphosate in it, and all the wheat products, you know, and um, it's uh, that's what's Steffi, causing I the allergy. I can't allergy. tell you how many graphics I have seen on Pinterest that say 
these are the these are the foods that you need to worry about that are possibly GMO. Um, and you know, like all these other foods are like safe, right? And that's and, just and not true. You know, yeah, all natural. Right. My kids sort of think all oh, natural isn't that good. No, it's not good enough. You have to get you know organic. You have to get certified organic. Even certified organic is going to sometimes have glyphosate in it because they're not using it on the. They can't use it. You know, if they're being legal, legally mm -hmm. certified organic, which is great, and that means it's going to be lower levels. But it's in the water. It's in the rain. I mean, it's so. It's pervasive in the air, the that you water. can't. It's probably in the manure even that they're using to fertilize the, the uh, you know, the, to provide the fertilizer. Well, they use sewage sludge. Um, you have to worry about, you know, those things too. So it's like as long as the glyphosate is being used so massively everywhere, you cannot avoid it. And you're going to get it in your drinking water. You're going to probably, if you live near these fields, you're going to breathe it. And it can go straight. In fact, there was a paper I read recently that showed that the nose actually has these cells that will take up the glyphosate acting using uh, mechanisms that usually take up amino acids. So it's got, it, it, the cell gets fooled and thinks that it's an amino acid and it's able to take it up and take it in the lymph system directly into the brain from the nose. Really scary stuff. Well, like Splenda has a chlorine molecule in it and actually Surgeon General Koch, is that how you said his name? He used to be the surgeon, he called that a pesticide. Mm -hmm. Splenda, a pesticide because of the, is really, really the, the toxic. chlorine molecule in there. And That's I've actually had it take all the taste out of my mouth. Wow. And then when I went swimming in a pool with chlorine, the same thing oh, happened. Wow. So and I connected, connected that up. chlorine in the Splenda. Yeah, that's, that's really And incredible. I just thought that that was a good example on how these chemicals in the food really do affect us. Because right. I couldn't believe the taste in my mouth, this metallic taste. People, from people using believe, that. the government seems to believe that the, whatever levels are there are below toxic. There's like this concept that is so low you wouldn't notice it. But the thing is with the glyphosate in particular, my, our studies are indicating that it accumulates. And this is why as you get older and older, you're going to build up more and more glyphosate in your tissues. And depending upon how fast you're getting it, in other words, whether you're eating you know, GMO Roundup Ready Corn and Soy, um, you're going to get sicker faster because you're going to get this glyphosate throughout your tissues. That's going to give you the you know, the rheumatoid arthritis, and it's going to give you Alzheimer's. I mean, all kinds of nasty diseases that you're going to acquire. Because there's these pathways within our, our body and that are, that there's actually like, from what I, I was reading, like some of your notes from one of your studies, and it, the way I pictured it, is there kind of these places where we're vulnerable, yes. like the mitochondria? That's right, the mitochondria, and also in the brain, it's been shown that glyphosate accepts, uh, excites these receptors called the NIMDA receptors, and if you overexcite the NIMDA receptors, you can burn out the neuron. And it's been shown that glyphosate does that. It, it messes up. It causes excess glutamate in the brain. Hey, that have a, it that's a brain. whole new level of burned out brain. <laughs> yeah, <isn't it? laughs> and they're getting the mitochondria destroyed at the same time, so they they don't have energy. And they're over, they're over exciting themselves without adequate energy even to do it, and so they just fall apart. You know, the neuron just dies. And well, as I'm listening to you say that, I'm thinking in my head, um, you know, about the DNA damage that happens as a result of this mitochondria being exposed mm -hmm. uh, to different things as a result of the, this pesticide. But I know that you said that it affects the, the mag mag manganese, 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 manganese. I always get those, yes. I have to hold myself on, make sure I say the word right, manganese or magnesium. Magnesium, is, people know magnesium, but ma most people don't realize it's about manganese. And manganese is a really, really interesting mineral, essential, and but also potentially toxic. Excess manganese can cause Parkinson's disease if you have excess manganese in the brainstem. But too little manganese causes all kinds of problems. You, you need manganese in the mitochondria, and I've, I actually learned two new things about manganese recently. Very, oh, okay. very interesting. And I can share this with you yeah. for the first time because there's this um, enzyme called proline, prolyl transpeptidase. I believe that's right. Um, but this enzyme actually breaks down gluten. So it's very important for breaking down these proteins at, mm. these, at these particular sites, which is proline and to, to cut it up so that then it can be broken down further. Right. You can get rid of the protein and then it won't cause immune reaction. And that enzyme depends on manganese. I was really shocked to see that because that's oh, a well really that makes good sense. link to the gluten intolerance. It totally explains that. I mean, really, it's a very good um, explanation for why the glyphosate in the wheat would cause the, the, the digestive system not to be able to break down the wheat. And then the other one was a phosphatase in the, um, in the brain 
which is essential for the pituitary gland to release an, a, 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 an assist a, a hormone that activates the thyroid gland. So it's the, what it will cause is hypothyroidism because this uh, is also dependent on manganese. This and so what do people start gaining weight, you know, and they're like, gosh, I've got yeah. something wrong with my thyroid, I know it, you know, and, and then they, you know, so many times people think, oh, yeah, they're, yeah, you're gaining weight because you're a thyroid, no, you're just eating too much. What do you, what do you say to that? No, I think hypothyroidism is a huge issue, and furthermore, really? the, the mother, if the mother has hypothyroidism, then her fetus has a fourfold increased risk to autism. Wow. So it's totally linked to the autism. Wow. And of course, the gluten intolerance is also something that autistic kids often have. They have a higher risk of gluten intolerance than other kids. So that's all also connected to the autism, you know. And then, well, I wanted to ask you, too, because I know that selenium helps to repair DNA in the mitochondria. It, yes. So how is selenium being affected in all this? Because I'm thinking about we're having all this DNA damage going on in mm -hmm. the mitochondria as a result mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. But we need the selenium to come along and repair that DNA. So is that happening? Well, the selenium is another problem like the manganese. I think that is pretty clear to me that there's a selenium problem going on as well. That's what I was and wondering. Yeah, because it's just another mineral. Glyphosate messes them all up. It messes up iron in particular. I mean, we have a huge problem right now with anemia which is insufficient iron, but also iron toxicity at the same time. So people walking around tired all yeah, the time. Yeah, right, because of anemia, but, that, but the anemia and the iron toxicity are both present. It's ironic that it's toxic as well as being deficient. It seems, it seems like it's not possible, you know, it's contradictory. But that's because the glyphosate totally messes up the way the body transports the iron. The iron is really tricky. It's like oxygen. You know how you have to have a big, thick oxygen tank if you're gonna ship oxygen because it's explosive. Iron is very, very reactive, and that makes it a great well, what about these Catalyst. different types of iron, though, that they're getting in food, too? There's cheap iron yes, supplements. Yes, you're right. You're right. You have so could that have an impact as well? That can have well? an impact, too, because the heme iron is what you need, and actually glyphosate messes up the synthesis of heme. And so if you're eating, if you're not eating a lot of uh, animal-based yeah. foods, you're, eating, you're getting your iron you're not getting vegetable, heme you're not at getting all, heme, then. and the glyphosate is going to keep you from making it, and it's going to keep your gut microbes from making it, too. So usually the gut microbes actually prepare these. It's really fascinating. They prepare these minerals by putting these... They build these um, very nice uh, like a cages around. Yeah, like a, like a liposome. You could say that. It's a cage around the iron that makes it much more manageable to ship the iron in. It was absolutely fascinating. I found out that the kidneys actually are, have, a, have a receptor that's able to take up these, um, they're called siderophores, that are produced by the bacteria. It's the, 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 the biology is just incredibly fascinating. Yeah, I, I know, love it. I, I know. Just I just it. love it. I love it. <laughs> but the kidneys get their iron. I was really surprised to see this. And, and it's, a, it's a good source of iron for the kidneys to take it up from these siderophores that are produced by the microbes. Really, really fascinating. And the microbes can't, you know, will be impaired in their ability to produce the siderophore because of the glyphosate. And the kidney, I think, could be also impaired. You, in you know why? To take it out. What I'm thinking, why that that would happen, is because the kidneys, those little, um, you know, the filters and the, everything is so tiny in the kidneys. And I'm thinking that the iron that comes from the bacteria would be maybe in, even in a smaller form. Could be. That, that is easier for the kidneys to handle so yeah. that it doesn't get stuck in those filters. Yeah, in it's any an interesting way. thought. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have Yeah, I, I know. I love yeah. to try to figure yeah, this stuff I, I, out yeah. on like how our bodies are <laughs> yeah. working. Well, because the kidneys we, seem to have a so unique way to bring an iron. Yeah. There's and so then, much um, we don't know. And then the kidneys can get in trouble with both iron. They need the iron. For the, they'll get in trouble if they have iron deficiency because they can't take it up. And they'll get in trouble with iron toxicity because it's hanging out outside their environment and they can't get it. So it's just a free, loose iron is toxic you know and, and it can't it, especially if you have if you have you, that that, you have that condition where you accumulate iron already and I'm trying to remember the name of that oh, condition. Oh yes I know what you mean. Hi, uh, hi, hypercromatosis yeah. or something yes. like that. Yeah yeah that's it. Yes, yeah, and yes, there are some right. people that have that that's and right. iron for them Iron is. they need to, to do a lot of uh, donating blood to get yeah, 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 a lot to of keep blood. their blood thin yeah. Yeah so how come like we hear so much about the damage to the kidneys and the liver. Mm -hmm. How come those are the two organs that are getting the most damage? That we know, mm -hmm. I, probably a lot more organ, there's a lot more organ damage going on, but we're yeah, really seeing it. Those two it really in, are. Uh, that's what Seralini saw in his studies. He really found, he found the tumors, in the mammary tumors, and he studied the rats for the full uh, lifespan. 
uh, being fed Roundup Ready. But the hey. lymph nodes are like, I, I'm always fascinated by the lymph nodes too. The I lymph is really, really fascinating and I need to learn more about it. And actually they need to learn more about it too because they only recently discovered that there actually is a lymph system in the brain. Really, really oh. fascinating because they thought the brain, I can't believe they didn't know this you know, all these years, but only recently And it's different than the cerebral spin spinal yeah, fluid. Yeah, there's it's actually a uh, lymph, lymph separate pathways that follow right along the blood vessels and that somehow they missed them all these years. It's kind of a stunning new paper that came out. There's a lot of really exciting work happening You, right you want to know how I think about the lymph system? I think of it as like, uh, like crossing the border. Uh -huh. I think you got to cross the border, you got to get past all the inspections mm -hmm. and to make sure that you're a self-cell uh -huh. And you're not an invader, but uh -huh. if you're an invader, you get sent to secondary. Uh -huh. And they're going to check you out in secondary. And if you are an invader, I see because you go through the process. <laughs> the, I mean, they it's take really, you apart and they create they, antibodies specific. Yeah, it's so fascinating with for those that, like little soldiers, cells. millions of yeah, them to so go through. Yeah, so incredible. Your mind. And you know, the thymus gland is where these uh, immune cells mature. It very, you know, right after birth. Um, the, the baby has a big task to sort of learn about his physical world and what's there and what's what's good and what's not good, you know, and, and these uh, immune cells are produced and then they, they mature through a process in the thymus gland. And uh, one of the things remarkable that I found, I mean, one of my friends found, we did a paper, Judy Hoy, who's a fascinating woman. She's, uh, I've she's had her studied. on my show. She's great, isn't she? She's I know. so fun. I, I've got like a whole page she's I've been original. wanting to publish. I've got yeah. all her information she's on really, uh, She's just a, uh, a wealth of information about the wild animals in Montana. Because she and saw it firsthand with her own eyes. She's just so observant, you know, and so, and she actually would get the, even the roadkill, you know, and she would open up the, the